How eccentric is Palm Beach? Would you believe they let a spider monkey run for mayor? It's true. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. Let's go. I'm Paul Meaches Paul, your favorite South Florida realtor and guide to living in paradise, and welcome back to my channel. Behind me, that's White Hall or Henry Morrison Flagler's museum. That is to the west. And as I spin around and you look at the building way back there in the east, that is the Breakers Hotel. Two legendary landmarks, both built by this amazing man. Today I'm bringing you a video that I've wanted to make since I started making videos. So I'm standing in front of the Flagler Mansion here on the island of Palm Beach. It's a museum where Henry Morrison Flagler once lived and it was actually a gift to his second wife, Mary Keenan. Not a bad wedding gift, right? And Palm Beach County wouldn't be Palm Beach County and Palm Beach wouldn't be Palm Beach if it wasn't for Henry Flagler. Flagler pretty much invented the term wintering in Palm Beach because of his efforts to extend the Southeast Coast Railroad all the way down to Key West and of course coming through Palm Beach County and Palm Beach, he made this place a winter destination for the rich and famous. So let's get started. So the Seagull Cottage was actually Flagler's first house here in Palm Beach before White Hall was built. It's actually the oldest house here on the island of Palm Beach. And as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, another beautiful way to discover the island of Palm Beach is on bicycle. And I did a couple videos here. I did one with my friends, Troy and Andrea, of Troy and Andrea's Little Adventures. And you can click at the link at the end of the video and watch that. And I also did another one by myself years ago. And basically, it's this bike trail that runs the length of the island from basically down to the bridge down here at Okeechobee and kind of starts there. And then it will run all the way up north. It kind of stops and you have to get off the trail, but you can continue riding your bike and the goal is that you go all the way north so you get to this little spot that sits right at the Palm Beach Inlet. And then there you can see Singer Island, uh, Peanut Island, and uh, all the big ships come in. So it's really beautiful and it's a great bike ride. Mr. Flagler, I'm with Uber Eats. Your food is here. I can only imagine how beautiful it must have been to be you know, sitting there on your front porch or one of your rooms and looking out and seeing this amazing hotel that you had built. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's first talk about this amazing home and Henry Morrison Flagler. So Flagler made his money the way a lot of people did back then, oil. So he and Rockefeller uh, founded Standard Oil Company and later on Flagler developed the Florida East Coast Railroad. I apologize earlier, I think I said it incorrectly, but it's Florida East Coast Railroad. But basically he made his money with oil and he made so much money from that that he was able to kind of sit back and relax because each year he just had millions of dollars coming in. Flagler's house. This is a quote from the New York Herald in 1902. More wonderful than any place in Europe, grander and more magnificent than any other private dwelling in the world. This is how the New York Herald described Whitehall in 1902. He built this 100,000 square foot, that's right, 100,000 square foot, 75 room, gilded aged mansion as a wedding gift for his second wife, Mary Flagler. Now I've gone in this museum on a tour and I highly recommend it. It's about $26 for adults. Um, they don't allow any photography, so why I'm out here, but it is an absolutely stunning just it's breathtaking the amount of details they put into this house back in 1902. I mean, you just have to see it, trust me. It is worth 
the admission to go see this if you're ever here on the island of Palm Beach. Now they use this as their winter retreat from 1902 to 1913, which is when Flagler died. Do you think they'd get upset if we did a little uh, football scrimmage right here on this lawn? I mean, can you imagine? I bet someone played football here at some time. Wow. spectacular but ladies and gentlemen I present the jewel of Palm Beach the Breakers Hotel hey guys here we are at the Breakers Hotel and it is just it's just an amazing historical building it's an amazing hotel resort whatever you want to call it, it is spectacular and it is world renowned. Everybody knows the Breakers. So, but I have a little history for you and I'll tell you that. We're gonna talk a little bit about the history right before we go in. I do wanna say that this is a very private hotel and they don't really like people walking in with cameras and there's a lot of famous people here, dignitaries, you never know who's in here. So they do have some sort of, you know, they have rules and there's <laughs> decorum, I guess you want to say. You don't just walk in there flashing your camera. So I have mine on a little tripod. I may have to take it off that and just use the camera. Um, I have two friends who actually work here. One of them is one of my clients. And um, so, you know, just got to be respectful when we go inside. I mentioned earlier, Flagler had built Whitehall for his wife, Mary, as a wedding gift. And that was their winter residence. And they did that because they had friends and all the other socialites who were coming down here too. Palm Beach and those people needed a place to stay. Now the Breakers wasn't the first hotel he built. He actually built a bigger hotel that stood for many years as one of the largest wooden structures and it was called the Royal Poinciana Hotel. The Royal Poinciana was an 1100 room monstrosity of a hotel and it was all wooden and yeah I think it did burn down but it was 1100 rooms and it was so large and the hallways were so long that bellhops actually rode on bicycles through the hallways to deliver messages because it was over three miles long. Can you imagine that? So I guess today you could maybe get on a, um, one of those things, uh, I forgot what you call them, that you stand on and they, you balance, I can't think of it, but you could ride one of those. So, but yeah, three mile long hallways. It was a huge structure and it was over on the other side, over next to White Hall, over there at the beginning of Palm Beach, closer to the Intracoastal Waterway. So after that was built, then he decided to build the Palm Beach Inn, which is what the Breakers was originally called. And it was a smaller hotel and it was over on the beach side. So some of the guests who would come down, the regular guests who would stay at the Royal Poinciana, said that they'd like to stay in a quieter hotel over by the Breakers. And hence the name stuck. So the next season he called it the Breakers. The building is absolutely beautiful as you see it today but it didn't always look this way. So it's actually had some pretty bad luck. So in 1901, Flagler doubled the size of the hotel and he renamed it the Breakers. And then shortly thereafter in 1903, it caught fire and burned down to the ground. Then being the Americans that they wore and a never die attitude, they rebuilt it again. And they said it will be open next season. And it was, they rebuilt it. And then it burned down again. So finally in 1904, they got together and said, we're going to build the most grandest, beautiful hotel we can. And they built a four story hotel again out of wood. You know where that's going. And it opened up uh, to fanfare and, and applause and everyone loved it. And you could get a room for four dollars a night that included breakfast, lunch and dinner. You don't want to know what those rooms cost today. But as I said, tragically enough, 12 years after Flagler had died in 1925, on the night before the big St. Patrick's Day ball, unfortunately, the hotel burned down again. The cause? Well, apparently, the then mayor, Big Bill Thompson of Chicago and his wife were staying here and she left her curling iron on. At least that's what they said. So make sure you turn your curling iron off, ladies or guys. But 
again, at this time, the family said, we will not give up. And that's when they got together and built the grandest hotel of all, which is now the Breakers Hotel. Now, what's amazing is the family said they were going to have this hotel up for the next season, which was the 26, 1926 winter season. And they did it in 11 and a half months. They built the Breakers Hotel to a tune of $7 million. And uh, it is just a wonderful, wonderful piece of history and a beautiful landmark. So let's go inside and take a look. All right, and here's where you can see it got its name, the Breakers. Now there actually used to be a pier out here a long time ago. Uh, it got knocked out by a hurricane. I, I don't know, it's before I moved here, I think. But uh, I'm not sure if it's that way or up this way a little bit, but it's a great place to go snorkeling if you can get to it. The problem is access to the beach, it's obviously private. So you have to park way down somewhere and then walk all the way up the beach to get out in the water. So it's a bit of a hike. But this is why people have been coming here since 1901 to uh, enjoy this. That beautiful ocean breeze. Obviously, it's in the middle of summer, so it's not as nice as it is in the winter. But I tell you, right here with the wind blowing, it's actually pretty cool. It's not bad. Told you it was paradise. So obviously, over the years, they've added a lot to it. They've added some really grand ballrooms, uh, some extra you know they got bungalows now they got like bungalows that you can rent uh, on the beach and um, they've got a family zone and of course they got their swimming pool they've got the golf course they have a, a restaurant off-site uh, they have um, Henry Morrison Flagler restaurant or HMF which is uh, like a really nice dining experience that they have here and um, as you can see you can kind of walk around and just see part of the hotel but out here walking around on the beach it's a resort i know i keep calling it a hotel it is it is a resort it's a world-class famous five-star top-notch everything you can imagine being the best the breakers is it that room right back there is called the rotunda it's really cool inside i'm gonna see if i can get to it from the inside. I did once and uh, it's really neat. Of course, one of the really neat things they have here is they have the seafood bar and uh, you sit at the bar and it's an aquarium. So as you're having your meal, your drinks, you look at 
down and uh, you can see Nemo or whatever you want to name your fish. Pretty cool. Hi right, guys, this is the round room or the rotunda I was talking about when I was outside and uh, you hear the echo in here? Just, they just don't build stuff like this anymore. It's just amazing. Look at the walls and the ceiling and look at the, the glass and the chandelier. I mean, like I said, it's, it's a museum. It's a museum, it's a piece of art. It is completely amazing. God, look at this place. It's like going back in time. It's a time capsule. It's just magnificent. And uh, there's just so many cool aspects, the architecture. So when they built this, they, they basically hired the best, you know, craftsmen in the world. And uh, it is copied off an Italian um, mansion, I believe. I, the exact details you could look up, but I believe when they rebuilt it, they went and looked at uh, Europe and some of the finest homes. And so they kind of went after that sort of Italian look that they had there. And they just, they brought in the best of the best. And think about this, they built that in 11 and a half months. I mean, and it's obviously been added on over all these years, but just a magnificent, uh, just magnificent. <laughs> I love this stuff. I geek out over history and, and this place is beautiful and I've always been a big fan of it. So, all right, well, let's continue our tour of Palm Beach. So now we're gonna head over to Worth Avenue because if you're gonna stay in Palm Beach, you obviously gotta do a little shopping in Palm Beach. So let's head over there right now. Right. The Breakers was pretty spectacular, but when you're staying in the Breakers, you obviously want to go do a little shopping, right? You're here in Palm Beach, and where do you go? Well, well, most people have gone for many years to do some very exclusive shopping is the Avenue of Worth Avenue, and that's where I'm at right now. I found this cute little uh, area. I've actually never been in this section before. I've kind of walked around here quite a few times, but I've never found this before. And he's got these really neat little, you know, uh, statues of children playing, pieces of art. And uh, it's just a neat little garden that I happened to find by accident. I just walked down this way. And they have this nice little garden over here, fenced off, called Lovey's Garden uh, in honor of a lady. And so just one of the really unique things that you find here in Palm Beach. There's always something to find when you come over here. It's a really neat place. And I usually find something new each time I come. 
All right, so how did Worth Avenue get its name? Well, it's named after General William Jenkins Worth, and it's one of the first luxury shopping areas here on the island. And it started back in 1918 when architects Addison Meisner and Paris Singer of Singer Sewing Machines introduced the Mediterranean style to the region and with their design of the Everglades Club. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now the oldest store, and it's been here since 1923, is called, I'm gonna probably pronounce this incorrectly, but it's called Cassati's. And it's been around here since 1923. Now there's over 250 other high-end shops, boutiques and restaurants and art galleries uh, with names such as Giorgio Armani, Cartier, Louis Vuitton, Tiffany & Company, Ralph Lauren, Gucci, Chanel, and many others as you see when we walk down this avenue. And you can attribute the whole look to Palm Beach from the very famous architect, Addison Meisner. We're going to talk about him as well. So as you can tell, it's an absolutely beautiful place to come shopping and uh, very Italian like with this uh, little villa, the Mediterranean look it has and the fountains. We are probably the most irreverent shop. Hey Dash, will you say hi to the audience? Hi! Hi! Can you say hi? Tongue. Oh. <laughs> no, no tongue? No? You're quiet now, huh? <laughs> so I just met Sherry the owner of this cute little store and uh, they had that little sign in there and of course her cute dog um, they actually have a, a dog contest here and she told me that i should bring my dogs down here so uh maybe i'll get sunny and uh, liberty down here for the dog contest and have a little fun but uh, this is just one of the neat little places here off worth avenue you can walk through and find nice little shops like this so if you want to check out sherry's place do so but uh we're gonna head over to uh, via meisner and uh, show you some really cool architecture over there now it's obviously summertime here in Palm Beach, so it's nowhere nearly as crowded and, you know, everything going on as it is during the season. Uh, in the winter months, this place is packed and it is just everyone and anyone that's uh, pretty much wealthy and wants to do shopping is down here. Man, even regular folks like myself. See how it's construction going on. They get that stuff done during the summer. <laughs> and it won't be going on during season when all the, uh, Palm Beachers are here. And this little area right here is really special because this is where they'll put the Christmas tree up uh, during the holiday season and it's absolutely beautiful. It usually sits right around here and the whole place is decorated with lights and uh, it's pretty special. You never know who you'll run into during the season. I've been driving down the road. The only people I saw that were famous were Don King. One time, kind of yelled out the window, he waved back. And then when my first son was a baby, we were pushing a stroller around and we ran into uh, one of Donald's ex-wives, Marla Maples, and she was there with, with her baby, Tiffany. And uh, it was kind of funny, she had her security guard and I was with my son, <laughs> my wife at the time. And uh, you know, the kids looked at each other that was that so um, but you never know who you run into and every once in a while you may run into a nice gentleman who's this this is organic soap oh uh, nice so they're gonna give me a little sample what's, what's your name my name is Giovanni what's your name Paul Paul what do you use under your eyes what's what are and you for your blog I will give you a small gift for your eyes I will make oh, the really? puffiness and the line disappear all right guys see we're in Palm Beach all right guys so Here's the left eye, here's the right eye. Do you see it? It's actually tighter. He put some cream on it, made it look really nice. Giovanni, great guy. So his store is right here, 319 Worth Avenue. Come down here and uh, he will take care of you. He's got some other really neat, all organic CBD, really nice Thanks products in there. So we'll have to check them out. look as far as architecture it was Addison Meisner and we are now in Via Meisner 
So this is one of the first areas where Worth Avenue had its shops and this beautiful apartment that you see back here was Addison Meisner's home. This was the last place he resided. Now he did have a beautiful home down in Boca Raton and I actually did a video about that a few years ago, but this is the one where he lived when he was here on the island of Palm Beach. And he's really famous for the design of Palm Beach that you see in a lot of the homes and the buildings. And this was also one of the first little vias, Via Prigi, so with its shops. And as you can see walking through it, it's, you know, just, it's beautiful and relaxing. I mean, I mean, shopping like this is a pleasure because you're so relaxed and everything around you is absolutely beautiful and trees the stores so it really is a unique experience that you should come check out at least once in your lifetime oh cool they have a surf shop here in Palm Beach and places like Boca Raton, like the Boca Raton Resort uh, and Country Club, he also designed that. So uh, he definitely left his mark on South Florida. Now, Meisner wasn't from Palm Beach or even Florida. Um, I don't know exactly where he was from, but he was well-traveled and uh, he'd been all over the world. And he was kind of asked to come here by a friend, Paris Singer. Now, Paris Singer was uh, the heir to the Singer sewing fortune and uh, in which Singer island is named after and so he was here in Palm Beach and he's you know told him to come down here and well the two of them got together and started designing but the main reason he asked him to come down was at the time he wanted him to design a hospital for you know wounded World War one soldiers but the war ended and before they could really get started in the hospital uh, they decided that they would do something else and they turned it into the Everglades Club so Addison Eisner made a name for himself by building all these beautiful homes here in Palm Beach. So he built homes for like the Wanamaker family. And uh, of course that home in turn turned into the Kennedy compound when President Kennedy and his family were here on the island. And he also built a Vanderbilt estate, which later on uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono lived in for a while. And so he built a lot of these really amazing mansions here. Now he spent his last 10 years in Via Meisner, which is this apartment here on Worth Avenue. And one of his companions, he had a lot of different animals. He had raccoons, he had an anteater, um, just a kind of interesting guy. But one of the things, or one of the pets he had, his most famous one, was a spider monkey named Johnny Brown. <laughs> So this is the front entrance to the apartment. It's now owned by you know, family, they live here, but you can see the little monkey emblem up top for uh, Johnny Brown. Now an interesting fact about the apartment, apparently Addison Meisner had little hatches that he could open up and dump boiling hot water on people. Um, again, this was in the 1920s, so things were a little different back then. I don't think there's as many lawsuits, but if you were bugging him, I guess he could drop hot water on you to <laughs> leave him alone. So. Um, and uh, that's where he and his monkey and his other pets apparently live. All right, fun little fact. The island of Palm Beach is known to only have two cemeteries. At least that's what I was told. And those two cemeteries belong to pets. One of them, Johnny Brown, Addison Meisner's pet monkey, and another for the people who bought the apartment afterwards and lived in it for like 50 years, called Laddie, their dog. And those plots, tombstones, are actually right here in this beautiful restaurant. So. I would say if you're gonna ask for the best seat in the house, you would ask them to sit you next to Johnny and Laddie when you're over here at the island. All right guys, and it wouldn't be a video about Palm Beach didn't talk about, I don't know, being exclusive or 
private. So I'm standing in front of the Everglades Club, probably one of the most private places here on the island. So the Everglades Club was built in 1919. Originally, it was gonna be for wounded World War I soldiers. As I told you, Paris Singer had asked Addison Meisner to come here and design it. Uh, but the war ended, and so they, in turn, they decided to design it and make it a private club. Now, how private? Well, out of the 1,100 members, they've never publicly you know, made a list of who their members are, but it's pretty exclusive with names like, oh, the Vanderbilts, um, Meriwether Post, who was the heiress who owned what Trump now owns, Mar-a-Lago, uh, the Huttons, as in E.F. Hutton, the financier, uh, just all sort of the Wanamakers, Singer, um, lots and lots of very well-to-do people have been through these walls, including your very own Palm Beach's Fall. Yes, that's right. I have actually been inside the Everglades Club, but it was not as a member. So back when I was about 28 years old, I was a sales rep for an office supply company and fax machines and whatnot. And somewhere up there is their office. And I used to go take care and deliver supplies for their fax machine. Um, of course, when I was there, I was able to walk around and see the inside of this amazing historical building. Now, this is back in the early 90s, so I didn't have a cell phone. Um, I think I had a beeper. And, um, but I would go there and, you know, help make sure their equipment was working okay. I was the sales rep, so I'd deliver supplies and maybe go there with the technician. And uh, I was able to walk through and see this just amazing place. So it is, it is a social club and uh, it's got this private, like it's got this whole area where they can dance and apparently the roof retracts so they can dance under the stars. Um, they have these big chairs and this huge fireplace and, and uh, interesting, they have this huge stairwell that was almost separating from the building and they had to totally you know, restore it. But it's very exclusive. They don't allow cell phones inside or on the golf course, not allowed. Now I will tell you, it is a very private club. How private? Well, let's put it this way. It doesn't matter how much money you have because they have money too. You really have to be invited into this club from what I've heard. But you know, that's part of that 1% uh, society, right? The less than 1%. But still, it's an amazing place with rich history and uh, just a really neat place. And I feel you know privileged that I was actually allowed to go in there at one point in my life and see it because I'm a history geek. So it was really, really cool. And I can only imagine what it looks like now after they uh, kind of fixed it back up and brought it to its former glory. Now, before any of this was built, actually this whole area here was swamp and it used to be a tourist attraction for Alligator Joe. That's right. People would come to Palm Beach and they would watch Alligator Joe wrestle alligators right here in Palm Beach. Now, that is not something you'll ever see on the island again. Um, there might be some alligator belts and alligator shoes, but I don't think anybody's wrestling any alligators. All right, guys. So that is my tour of Palm Beach. Some of the things that I find really interesting about it as we come here and you just kind of look at all this beauty behind me. It is an absolutely spectacular place and I'm going to make some more videos about it because there's a lot to tell about the island and a lot more history. So be sure to click the links at the end of the video because I do have some videos that will show you the bike trail here on the island of Palm Beach. And as always, when you're in the Palm Beach, <laughs> the island of Palm Beach or the Palm Beaches, get out and enjoy paradise. I'll talk to you next week.